Hello my friends and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use a JavaScript library called HowlerJS to import sounds and play sounds in the browser. It's really pretty cool what you can do with this thing here. Um, what we're going to be doing is first of all we're going to install this to our project but before we do that I want to show you one of the demos that you can see. I think it's down here. You can do something called audio sprites with the Howler JS. Let me click on that. And audio sprites is it's basically just one big audio file. And then you can split that audio file into different parts. So you can kind of chop it up. So you only have to load one big audio file. You don't have to load many small individual files which would mean that you would have a lot of server calls it would take a long time if, if it was an error with some of one of them then you would have a problem later on so it's much faster and easier if you can just open one audio file and uh, and chop that up into the pieces that you need so this is a basic example one that's one two three two so you can see it's graphically displayed here you have uh, this is one audio file this is one waveform of that audio file so I can click on this one and then I get some nice sounding music and then I can play click on these one two one two three so I think you get the point that uh, all of the sounds here are just a part of the same big audio file but they have just been chopped up so you can play them individually but we're not going to be using this sound file. We need to create our own sound file. And what we need is a sound file with a lot of different notes. Actually, I think we should make a sound file starting from C1 all the way up to C7. So that's a C in the lowest octave, 1, uh, spanning all the way up to a C in the 7th octave. So there are different ways to do that. But uh, I used a program called Logic. I, uh, I I I used the piano sound from the program, and then I recorded each and every single individual note from C0, sorry, from C1, here, all the way up to C7. So what I did, I'm not going to do everything right here, but I'm just going to give you an idea of how I did it. I made like one note here, and then I dragged it out, and then I made another one on the next. Something like this. And then I just kept going until I reached um, C7 here. So if I'm going to play this back. It should go all the way up to C7. I'm not going to do that right here. Uh, but I'm just going to pretend that we, uh, that we just did that. And then I will export it as an audio file, as an MP3 file or a WAV file. I recommend MP3 file because that's much faster to load. And luckily, I already made that file. And here you can see the waveform in Audacity. Um, let me just zoom in a little bit. So here we have all the notes from uh, from the lowest C1 to the highest C7. And as you can see, I added a little space in between every single one so we don't have them right up next to each other. That makes it easier to, uh, to make a clean cut. So, but yeah, this is... Oh wow, it's kind of meditative. <laughs> I don't know. But all the way up to here. And uh, this is the file we're going to import with HowlerJS. So uh, I exported this as an mp3 file. So let's go back to the code. So here we are back in our code editor. And uh, first of all, we need to install Howler before we can use it. So let's open up a new terminal window. And I'm going to go npm install Howler. And Howler has been installed. And now we have installed it. Let's import it. So import. And what are we going to import? We're going to get Howler, H-O-W-L-E-R, and Howl. And we're going to import that from Howler. 
Now that we have that, we can make a new constant. Let's call it sound. And let's set that equal to a new instance of, uh, of howl. So that's going to be a new howl. And that one takes an object. And there are some different things we can do up here. First of all, we want to provide the source for where you can file the audio file, the MP3 file that we created before. And by the way, I'm going to put a link in the description to, to the file, to the MP3 file, so you can download it and play around with it yourself. So let's put the file where it belongs. And let me open up the files here. And I know that we have to put it in the distribution folder. So let's do that. Uh, first of all, I just want to create a new folder and let's call it assets. Maybe we want to add new sounds later on. So it's nice to have a folder specifically for, for that. And then I am going to copy the file into that folder. And that has magically been done now. So if I open up here, I can, uh, I can see I have my file right here in my assets folder. So inside this object, we will provide a source attribute. And I'm going to put that in brackets like this. And we know that it's an asset. And it's called piano sprite. Dot mp3. That's good. And on the next line here, I'm going to provide an onload function. And this is when it has been loaded. We want to do something. Um, let's for now, I'm just going to console log sound file has been loaded. Do something here okay so that's what happens when it uh, it has been loaded but we also want to make sure that uh, we can get the errors if something happens during the load with this file if it's not available if it's corrupted if it's not recognized then we want to know what kind of error we're getting so let's add on load error that's a function and I will console log let's console log error and to get some information about the error first of all we can add this is the error the first argument and here's some message so let's just just in case we got an error it's nice to know what it is msg so let's save that and let's go into our browser and have a look gonna go to inspect and I'm gonna go to the console and I can see that the sound file has been loaded do something here and don't worry too much about this this will still work it's just a warning we're getting because in newer browsers you have to uh, you have to have a user gesture on the page before it can play audio so in other words uh, it can't just start playing audio automatically you need to click on something or the user needs to do something before you can play audio. So it works. That's that's nice. So let's have a look at what we did. So we have loaded the sound and uh, now I think we should check if it works. So instead of just testing it up here, let's create a new object. I'm going to do that down here. I'm going to call it sound engine. And this is where we will take care of all the, the sound, where we want to chop up the sound file into smaller bytes. But first of all, I think we should just initialize the sound engine and just make a little test. Uh, in the initialization here, this is where I want to split up the sound file into smaller bytes. But let's call that here, from up here. So now when it has been loaded, let's call sound engine init. And let's see if that works. Just type out something, console lock something. It works. Let's save it. And as you can see, the sound file has been loaded and this uh, method on the sound engine has been called. So it works. So let's try and play the sound. And we do that by saying sound because that's the one we define up above. And we're going to play it, run the play method here, and 
and it plays and it's gonna play all the way up and we're gonna sit here and we're gonna wait for it to finish all the way yes we are it's very interesting oh my god it's so suspenseful nah let's stop just gonna delete this and save this so now we are ready to take this file and chop it up into smaller bytes and we will have a look at that in the next video. So join me in the next video.